So here's the title of, of, uh, of my project and, and, and my name and that sort of thing. And I'll be showing quite a few photographs and of, of both beautiful things and of, of the olden type uh, during the presentation. So please uh, stop me if, since it has to go quite quick, this. Please stop me if you're particularly interested in something and I don't comment upon it. Because there are some remarkable women in here later on. And, and there's also, uh, I will be providing content for, for, for you that... Um, uh, who, who go and, and contribute so, so so well. So let me get started here. The, the special thing about our project, perhaps, is that we work with only one site. So all the work we do has to do with uh, the site of Ur, which is in, in southern Mesopotamia, put up on the map here, so in, in southern, southern Iraq. So everything we deal with is from this one site. And we deal with a whole range of, of different types of materials. We deal with fantastic 90-year-old photographs, such as this. We have the originals that we've now all scanned. Uh, we deal with biographies of people. This is Catherine Woolley that's sitting there, and she is a very fantastic woman in archaeology. So, so I don't know if she's in, in, in the trial basis, but uh, she certainly warrants a comment. And, and Hamoudi, man, sitting next to her, and they're putting an object into a bucket there, uh, which is a canoe from tablet. And we're dealing with all of these different things in our project. And uh, it's a collaborative project between the British Museum and Pan Museum. Uh, and hopefully also in the future Rock Museum. We almost had uh, all of these three museums joined together a little while ago, but then uh, various events uh, got in the way. But hopefully in not so long we'll be able to, to, uh, to, to become a, a, a trio again. I will give you a little bit of context before I get to the, the to sort of the crowd solution and a, a, a bit of it, uh, because that's rather important to understand what we are providing. And, and, and this is just a, a short uh, slide about the city of Ur, which is at the center of what we do. And this is an old RAF photograph uh, taken during the um, excavations. So you can see it's a massive, massive site. So up the, the thing that cast a big shadow there up in the corner, uh, uh, or in the middle, more or less, is, is a cigarette. So think of an Egyptian pyramid just with steps and, and a completely different function. And you got the scale of, of the thing. And then uh, you probably also can recognize the cities. And you have the royal tombs down there in the corner. And all these fans sticking out as soil heaps from the excavations. So, so this is a very massive site. It's a very unique site. There's no other site quite like it that has this, this, this uh, diversity of finds. It's an old site. It was there for, for a very long period of time. It got, as mentioned, monumental architecture. It got these very special tombs with, with fantastic objects in it. You'll see some later. And of course, uh, human sacrifice uh, on a very large scale, which is, is, is also unique to the site of Ur. And it was the center of an empire for, for a brief moment of time in archaeological scale. And we got private houses. We've got schools with school texts, 4,000-year-old texts, all about uh, 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 little boys being bored in the class and, and that sort of thing. So we've got all of this <clears throat> has produced uh, a massive amount of artifacts that uh, currently I find in our different museums. Um, the excavations of this site happened at a very auspicious time uh, uh, in the 1920s and 1930s. The excavator, uh, Leonard Woolley, had at this point sort of learned how to excavate. His uh, excavations before were not very, very good. And he had a very much a captivated audience. And this is an interesting reference to the whole crowdsourcing bit. He knew how to talk to people, and he got people engaged, both in terms of press, but also people that came and visited him, um, both in Britain and, and in, in, in uh, Mesopotamia. Uh, of course, he did things uh, we don't currently do. So you gave him some money for the excavation, and he would give you a pot and a bead and that sort of thing. But uh, so, so we have, have parts of this collection scattered all over the world uh, due, to, due to this sort of thing. But he both crowdsourced uh, and crowdfunded. Not crowdsourced, he, he got crowds interested and crowdfunded. So that's interesting to, to notice that this happened then, uh, such a long time ago. And uh, otherwise, he was sponsored by the British Museum and Penn Museum. And then another uh, uh, a fantastic woman I saw on the uh, chart there, Gertrude Bell, she ensured. Uh, and this was the first excavation where this happened, that half of the collections stayed in Iraq and became part of the Iraq Museum. 
and the other half was split then equally between Penn Museum and the British Museum. And this is very important to, to our project and why our project was started. And, and this is the, the reunification term. And I, I put on random objects here, so I'm going to ramble on for, for a couple of minutes. So I thought you would have something nice to look at whilst I, whilst I talked. And these are all, sorry, all objects from, from war, obviously. And most of them are photographs were taken as part of this project. Uh, and you see two different ram in the thicket uh, there, one from, from British Museum and one from Penn Museum. Ours is a bit bigger, obviously. Uh, and, and this symbolizes the, 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 the problem in terms of the various corpora has been split between these different museums. So anyone that wants to study a specific type of pottery or ceramics or, or, or can you from tablets or anything like that will have to visit all three museums which, of course, causes a problem. Uh, and the start of this project uh, oops, uh, was that our, our directors realized we have to assist Iraq Museum uh, when uh, this was earlier when the war was still going on, or the former war, uh, <clears throat> in terms of getting our house in order so we know exactly what we have and re uh, can relate that to the excavation numbers and that sort of thing. Of course, we know what we have in terms of our museum numbers, but what that refers to in, uh, in the field, so that we can assist Iraq Museum and tell them you should have uh, uh, these objects according to our records. Um, and, and the problem with that is, of course, to track objects from, from the field to, to a museum number, which is, is quite a complex task at times. I'll get back to that as well. And so in order to do this, we are digitizing all objects in our collections and all Canephon tablets where we're translating those and transcribing and all those sort of things. And we are digitizing all uh, the original photographs. We've done that already. We scanned 1,596 photographs like this. And all the documents, all the field notes, field catalogs, tens of thousands of pages, and we'll get on to all the other material as well, making it completely open, of course. And part of the problem uh, uh, of, of tracking objects to, to the site is seen in this photograph, of course, where Leonard Woolley and Max Mallowan of UCL fame is looking over this sea of pottery. Uh, and um, it will be difficult for us to find out where, where exactly on the site that they came from. So the integration bit <coughs> Uh, is that we have, uh, we have objects in three different museums and more. UCL has some, and as mentioned, in several different places. We have archival photographs. We got archival texts, ancient texts, and, of course, recent objects. And we want to integrate all of this. We want to find a way in which all of this can be uh, <clears throat> put together uh, in, in one, one space so it can be related as, as it should be and, and that... Uh, uh, our database can assist in relating these various bits and pieces of information as best as possible. So that was sort of our, our goal. And this was partly prompted by our funders insisting on us not just producing content. They made it very clear that they were not just interested in us <coughs> uh, producing something that enabled uh, archaeologists to uh, uh, study dispersed collections. Uh, they, they said, we don't want to help you to study in your pajamas, uh, was uh, more or less the exact words, uh, which uh, meant that we had to come up with a reason why we were doing this beyond providing content. And of course, creating these, integrating all this information uh, and, and creating, letting the database then take care of the relationships between an archival text, modern object, an archival photograph. That is how we are producing something new, just by, by, by putting all of this information into a database. Herein lies the, the micropass connection, of course, because we have tens of thousands of pages looking very much like this. Uh, so in other words, messy. Uh, that we need to transcribe an index in order to, to make all of these different bits of information fit into the right places so that when you go somewhere and look up an artifact, you get not only the modern description and a recent photograph, you get the ancient photograph as well from the excavation and you get the right pages from both the catalogue and the field notes. 
So it means I have five minutes left. Super. Uh, and unfortunately, London Rowley and Max Malibon were not very tidy people. A little bit helped by Catherine Woolley, which I think held Leonard Woolley a bit in the air, in his uh, ear, uh, so, so that uh, uh, occasionally you see her handwriting and her influence coming through, and, and things get a bit tidier. But otherwise, uh, this is how we are digitizing these catalog cards. Unfortunately, they, well, unfortunately for us, they were glued into big books at some point, rather than the cards that Jennifer is dealing with, I'm very jealous of her just putting them on top of a scanner. We had to photograph them all. Um, and we put a pane of perspex on top and, and photograph away. And it goes fairly quickly. And we're a big team of, of very dedicated volunteers, mainly from, from UCL, uh, that are, are doing this for us and, and, and uh, then doing a, a stellar job. And as you see from these, these notes of Max Malone's, it's not going to be an easy task to, to pick the various relevant pieces of, of information. He's here decided to write sideways. This was in a, in a period of few pages where he decided to put a heading uh, with a date, but that, that doesn't apply to many of them. Uh, very often there's no heading at all, as with this, this drawing that um, he's made here of the cigarette. I think it's a very, very charming piece of art. So, but exactly how are we going to index that? and so on is, is going to be uh, interesting and a challenge, but in the end will provide an amazing amount of, of rather unique and, and fantastic uh, data, I think. It will fit into a greater picture as well. This is another example of, of how all of it will integrate. This is one of our more prized objects. Uh, uh, and you see here uh, a photograph of, of the, uh, the liar being excavated. Catherine Woolley very much there being in the field together with Leonard Woolley with a funny hat. And you have the modern photograph there. And you got one of the first drawings um, of one of the liars here. And all of this will fit together and more as we go through the catalogs and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of different pieces of information that from properly indexed will just slot together and give us a whole new picture of, of this excavation. Another such example would be this grave, PG 1054. Uh, various, uh, uh, these are quite tidy pages uh, uh, with uh, illustrations and, and, and as you see comments and that sort of thing. And then uh, tidy photographs as well, where very kindly put in labels for us to find. So this will index quite well. And as you see, it will be a mass of information. This is on our, our current website. It's, it's live, but we haven't properly launched it yet because it changes day by day, and, and none of this archival data is in yet. Uh, this is one of the examples we put up to, to show people. Uh, it doesn't look quite like this, of course, but these are the sort of different bits of information we get in. Um, <clears throat> oh, that was the end of it, probably on time, I hope. Uh, so this is just a smiley picture of, of Leonard Woolley in his trademark shorts and, and uh, Hamidi, which was his lead, lead foreman. And, and please do, do get in contact with me, and I'm, I'm working uh, with, with Dan now and getting our stuff onto micropasses and, and that sort of thing. So, thank you.